Hey, Bass Geek here, and today I'm gonna tell you why the hooks you're using are all wrong when it comes to a swim bait. What's going on, geeks? Hey, I'm out here fishing with my buddy, Jeremy. Check him out. Hey, he does a lot of the editing for me. It takes a lot of the load off of me so that I can make more content, the shorts, the videos. Speaking of shorts, so I put a short or a TikTok out, wherever it was, whatever platform, and I answered a question about swim bait hooks. Guys, a lot of you all are using the wrong swim bait hooks, but it's not your fault. The industry has been selling you and telling you to use the wrong hooks for a long time. All right, guys, pay no mind to the mess. Let's get the hook box out. Trust me, I'm a lot more organized than that normally. That's right, guys, the industry has really BS'd you. I'm telling you, I can't tell you how many swim bait heads that I have gone out to buy and the biggest hook that they're putting in them it's a five volt a five volt okay so let me show you the difference between a five and a six volt it's really going to blow your mind I, I don't even have like i've got some at the house but i don't even have a, a five volt in my ledge heads now they sell them so if you really want one you can get one but this is close enough. Without the weight, pay no attention to the bend of the weight. The hook doesn't bend that way, okay? But it's really the same exact hook, okay? So here's what I wanna show you. The five alt hook literally isn't any bigger. The six alt gap is not any bigger and it doesn't come back farther. It comes back on the ledge head, the, the five volt literally has about that much room. It comes back maybe a half inch farther, a six alt. Now let's think about this hook, okay? Let's think about this hook. Let's look at the size of it. This hook and the gap, you, you sit and you think, man, that's a big hook. How big do you think the fish's mouth has to be to eat that? That's maybe an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter gap. I mean, a one pound bass could fit this in its mouth easily. So the size of that gap in that hook really isn't stopping you from catching small bass. I mean, if that's your thing, which here lately, that's my thing. And I'm catching them on this, all right? So, you know, don't feel bad. I'm catching like one and three quarters and two pounders on a six all hook. It's not gonna stop you. I mean, if you're fishing for bluegill, maybe not a six alt, right? <laughs> you really wanna be concerned about something on a swim bait head, and you wanna save money on your swim baits, this spring, look at the size of that. Look at the size of that. Compared to everything else, that's ginormous. That's right, ginormous. This head I love for a lot of reasons, but that arm, it's great when you're using, say, uh, hollow bodies and it's okay for everything else but that spring gets the job done let's compare it to this this is the common size of the spring that every daggone manufacturer puts on tell me how many swim baits that rips out or even worse the keeper that they put on there is a little hook tears them up man can't stand it. So I know the very next thing you're gonna ask me about or you're gonna say is gonna happen is that a longer hook is gonna impede the action of the bait. Let me say this. Now, by the way, out on ledgehead.com, there is a chart that shows what size hook you should be using for the size bait. Now, belly weights are a little different. We'll get to those next. Right now, we're talking about open hooks, okay? So open water hooks, open hooks, exposed hooks. This is a 3.3 Kitek. It is a two alt hook. Now that works, that works. It would probably work better for a 2.8, okay? So if you're getting misses, look how much room is back there this is the same exact style weight this is a ledge head but it is a three alt hook now it's a little heavier gauge and it does come back a little farther but even with that hook we're going to get a ton of action it's not going to impede 
that much action. If I can hold it up here, it's still in the body, okay? Still in the body. You're not gonna have to go to tie a stupid treble hook on and for whatever reason, clip off the hook itself. I mean, that's nuts. And you wanna talk about spending a lot of money on swim baits, yeah, clip the hook off, I dare you. We move on up to like the five inch. This is a five inch swim bait. I mean, look how much room we've got. Now imagine, that's a six alt hook, half ounce head, my favorite, my go-to. And then we talk about the hollow bodies. This is also a five inch. I was wanting to show you five, it's probably a 5.5 inch. Still only comes back to right there. I mean, let's look at the action that bait's still gonna have. During the summertime, that's perfect. And guys, I'm gonna tell you, it is really super simple. Now the Kitex get a little dirtied up and stuff like the uh, Rage Swimmers because they're like, you know, 3.5 inches. And you know, the Kitex are like 3.3, 2.8. But one thing you can kind of pretty much live by on exposed hooks, the length of the bait pretty much almost always corresponds to the size of the hook you should be using to. Let's say, if we're talking about a Kitek at 2.8, you can get away with a two alt. That's probably what you wanna be throwing. A 3.3, you can get away with a two alt, but a three alt's probably gonna be better. 3.8, a three alt all the way. Might be just a little small for it. 4.3, you know, you're probably gonna be going with a four alt. Now I do have a three inch. I think it's like 3.5 inches though, so it's almost four. And I use a four alt. So let me show you why on that. Now this is a four alt hook. This is the ledge head mini. And the reason why I use a four alt is because this is a little bit of a girthy swim bait, if you know what I'm saying. It's got a fat belly on it. So that's when I want a little bit bigger hook to come through. Like I said, it's a 3.5 inch, but if you hold this up to like a 3.8 Kitek, it's quite a bit bigger. All right, guys, this is an eight inch Bastrix, okay? So I will tell you, I do upsize a little bit. I don't go with a, a nine or even an eight alt. I move up to the 10. I'll show you how far that comes back. I think that's perfect for those big eight inchers. You can get away with an eight all day long. I don't even know if they make nines. Generally, I've got eight to t and tens, but that is, a, that is a hefty hook right there. So you're throwing these really ultra bigs. If you're throwing a seven inch, that eight inch is probably great, or the seven out if you can find them. Either one of those will work, but these bad boys, you probably wanna go up to the 10. That's a lot, lot of plastic. All right, so I wanna show you how to put one of these on. The great thing and the whole design behind this is that this keeps, when these baits rip down the back, it actually keeps it steady on the bottom because the bottom never rips. I mean, no matter how many fish you catch, it can rip from top and it'll keep it running true all the time, which is another reason why I like my ledge heads. Like I said, all you do, it just unhooks, you just bend it down. The very first thing you do is you just lay it out here you make sure where the hook's gonna come out. And you can see Jeremy's already used this when I'm borrowing his. But if it was unused, what you do is just in the dead center, you just poke you a nice little hole and that'll mark it. And that's the same exact way on like the finesse swim baits, the Kitex. You may not poke a hole, but one of the ribs, like what I do is the rib directly in front. I just, I nick it a little bit. So it's got a little tear in it. And I know that's where the hook's gonna come out is right at it or right behind it, okay? So the first thing is you wanna go dead straight through the center of the bait, okay? Make sure you're not biting any of the side walls. You wanna push it up and you wanna bring it out right at that hole. So what you do once you get it on there, you just slide it up. Now you wanna make sure you lift up right here you lift up and you make that nose fat and you go ahead and twist up on there. There we go. Twist that tail around. See, we're going on there good and straight. Twist that tail around. And there. Get it good and straight. That's the big key, good and straight. There it is, sits in there good. You don't wanna snug it up all the way. And then from there, all you do is you just poke a hole in the belly and hook that in. It's gonna keep it running straight. 
and there you have it now we've used this swim bait a couple times to do this so it's a little rough the swim bait itself that's how you put them on like i said that poor swim bait's all it seemed better days so we've done it two or three times but the great thing about this is, is this doesn't keep it. What's great is about the ledge head lowers. That is a huge spring. It's biting into the side. So I know you can see the spring. And that's actually a good thing because that small spring is going to go only straight through the nose. And there might be, might be an eighth of an inch. I mean, would that be giving it too much of plastic? I mean, on the big one, probably a little bit more. But on these, which are the six cents, I mean, I guarantee that nose is thin, straight through the middle. And I've actually taken five and six inch bass tricks with a small spring and literally cast them off the hook and just tear and core out the middle of the nose. That's why I like a big spring. If you're using belly weights, well, let's talk about that. So let's talk about belly hooks. This is an owner beast. This is an eight off. Belly hooks are a little bit of a different world, okay? So we can see legitimately, the owner is probably gonna come out just a little bit farther back, an eight off. Now you probably get away with a six off, but here's the problem you have with and especially on swim baits like, you know, the six cents hollow core. So the hollow bodies, the entire, this is a hollow belly. So see, it's just got a little slit in the belly. So it works pretty good. You can get away with a smaller hook, a smaller belly weighted hook because it's gonna have that little area to push up through. It becomes a problem with the clearance of the weight when it comes to belly weights, okay? So you wanna really go a size or two bigger. Like I said, this is an eight alt hook. This is probably what I'm gonna fish on this. You can see how far back it comes. You can also see it does not impede the action of the bait itself. Could probably get away with a six, but it's going, the bite of it is gonna be much smaller. So you're gonna have a little tighter and that, that's okay. That's okay. Since you've got the gap in the belly, you can get away with it on these. Now, when it comes to solid body or hollow body, this is a solid body swim bait. So there's no gaps in it whatsoever. And if you put a six salt on here, you know, belly weight, it's not gonna work because it's gonna hit the belly and you're not gonna have a lot of bite. Imagine just moving this hook down. It's almost gonna rest there. So an eight alt is almost what you're gonna have to have in these. So you really have to pay attention when it comes to belly weighted hooks and the type of swim bait that you're using as to what size you're gonna use. For example, the same thing goes with like this, uh, your hollow bellies because there's no slit. So you've got a lot of plastic to come through. So you can do one or two things. You can pre-cut this, which I don't like to do because you're gonna end up tearing it. And the same with this, or you can use something like this. Now this is a, and you can see it would come through quite nicely. This is a nine, but I would recommend on this eight inch, again, a 10 alt. And on this, I would highly recommend a nine alt on something like these, the five or the six inch hollow body swim baits. The nine alt, which is what this is, is what I would truly recommend. You can get away with it and you can cut the body and you get a smaller hook, so it's less gaudy. On the smaller baits, it's pretty much the same thing. You kind of want to go up a hook size and what they are, so it's like a 3.3, you know, you kind of want that four or that that three, you can get away with it on a 3.3, but you get to a 3.8 and you're gonna want that four. Same goes with those 3.5s that I showed you earlier. You're gonna want, you know, probably five all hook at that point. All right, guys, Jeremy is playing captain up here. Let me tell you, when you're on a trolling motor only lake, bring the chair because you always end up at the back of the lake and have a long troll out. And standing up and standing on that button, it sucks. So I hope this helped you. I hope it helps. If you've got questions about it, be sure to check out ledgehead.com where there is a hook guide on there that I made. And then other than that, if you got questions, put them down in the comment section below. You guys know I love to talk about fishing with you and nothing more than swim baits, swim bait heads, and swim bait hooks. I love it. Am I lying, Jeremy? Not at all. There you go. Don't forget to every Sunday and every Wednesday, new videos come out. And then we try to put out two shorts every week too. 
Um, normally they're on a schedule, but I'm not going to tell you that because sometimes they're not. <laughs> Anyway, long play videos, Sunday, Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you watch. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you ring that bell so you can watch. And guys, that is the most important thing. Watching 100% of the video helps the channel more than I can tell you. More than I can tell you. And as always, you guys rock.